All right, now I'd like to turn to Dan Davidson for his workshop, Tools, Techniques, and Tips. Dan, welcome. I think you mean Bob Davidson, but that's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I, I, think I do. I think I do too. I usually, but... I, I usually get Dave Robertson. Yeah. I usually don't get Dan. No, I'm, I apologize. You know, that, yeah. that, that, that shows how much of the personal touch I've got. There you go. <laughs> well, let me get going here. Bob, welcome. Thank you. Uh, tonight, uh, for workshop tips and tricks, um, what we're going to be talking about, uh, first off, just to remind folks who maybe weren't here last week, uh, for more than 50 years, I've worked in the theater and exhibit business as a scenic lighting graphic designer, also a carpenter, tech director, production manager. So right now I spend my spare time playing with trains. <laughs> Tonight's main topic is Let There Be Light, part one. Uh, we're going to come back to this a couple times, but what I wanted to talk about tonight is uh, a couple things that are very critical to us in the exhibit and in the theatrical industries, but it really has application to modelers, and I find that a lot of times we, we don't pay much attention. So first up, we're going to look at watts versus lumens, and then we're going to talk a little about color temperature and CRI, which is color rendering index, and uh, what that does with regards to color shift. So watts versus lumens, watts basically means nothing now. It's, it's the power used when you turn on the light. Lumens, however, are the light that is generated from a bulb or a lamp, depending on how you want to call it. So a lumen is a unit of light quantity equal to the light on a unit surface, all points of which blah, blah, blah. Basically, one lumen is a birthday candle that's one foot away from you. And if you want to get real technical, 10.76 lumens equals one foot candle. So here's a little chart that I think uh, brings this all home. So if you look at, uh, we have incandescent, halogen, CFL, which is a uh, fluorescent, and then LED. And you can look at the comparative light output and what the wattage input is for each of those. So uh, for example, on a 60 watt light bulb is putting out five between 500 and 700 lumens. That's the same as a 50 watt halogen or 11 watt fluorescent or a five watt LED. So really what you want to be looking at is looking at lumen output when you're looking at a light source on your layout or in your workshop. And uh, that, that's kind of why I'm showing this. Color rendering index measures on a scale from zero to 100, the ability of a light source to accurately reproduce the colors of the object it illuminates. You perceive color by reflection. So light hits an object and reflects its color back to your eyes. If it is a colored light that's hitting the object, it's going to affect how your eyes perceive that color. So a CRI, an index of under 55 is going to be poor. It's going to have poor color rendering. So that would be a warm white light bulb or a candle light or a lantern. Between 60 and 85 is going to be good rendering index, uh, which is a daylight or a cool white lamp. And then between 90 and 100, it will be excellent. And that's what we call a full spectrum uh, light source. So if you, I don't know how well this will transmit over the internet, but if you look on the right half, you see the tomatoes are pretty dull. That's a low color index. Uh, photograph. So that was lit with a low color index. If you look at the image on the left, how bright the greens and the reds are, that is a high, higher color index, CRI, okay? So now we just move on to color temperature. So this is the technical standpoint. There is an imaginary metal object, and when you heat it up, it starts to glow. So when you hear color temperature of 2,500 degrees Kelvin or 3,000 degrees Kelvin, 
It literally refers to the temperature of a black, what's called a black body when it's heated to, a, to that temperature. This is the actual scale uh, that it's done on. So you can see here through the, the arc, this dotted line, dashed line arc, and here you can see 1500K is very red, 2000 is getting into the, uh, the warmer, you know, orange, and then it starts to cool off as you get to the higher numbers. So just like a piece of metal, if you heat it with a torch, it glows red, then it glows orange, then it goes blue, then it goes white. So that's what the color temperature numbers mean. It literally is the temperature of, a, of an object and what color it gives off. This shows you the real difference here, okay? So if you look at the wall, we're starting on the left at 2700, which is warm white. And you go through 3000K, 3500, 4000, and 5000. You can see there's an incredible shift in the color of the light, which is going to mean that anything you paint, anything you build, is also going to shift depending upon the color of light you shine on it. Where this becomes a real issue, here's another example of that. Same setting on the left is lit with a warm white lamp. The middle is a cool white lamp and on the right is daylight. What this means is, is that if you paint something and look at it under one light while you're working on it, and then you move it over to your layout and you're lighting your layout with another color temperature, it's going to look totally different. The way we learn this is a lot of our clients in the in the exhibit industry have standardized colors. They have what, what we call PMS colors, which is a printing standard for, for color identification. And what we learn is we use full spectrum lighting in our shop. When you go onto some of these show floors, they were illuminating them years ago with sodium vapor or mercury vapor lamps, and it was shifting the colors. So it's very important that in your workbench, in your layout, especially in your spray booth, if you have a small spray booth, so many of these ones that you buy that come with lights, they're coming in with these blue lights. It's a blue, very blue cast, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 degree uh, LED light strip inside of it. It's really going to shift your color. So that's the whole point of this thing is when you, you need to have consistent lighting throughout the modeling space, your workbench, your spray booth paint area, and then on your layout itself. So how do you tell? Well, you look at the, here's a typical lamp, which are labeled that's on most of these, most uh, lamps that you'll buy. It'll list the brightness and lumens. Again, the wattage me really means nothing. And then the light appearance between warm and cool. So this is a 2,700 degree K lamp. I use 3,000 degree K everywhere in my workspace and on my layout. Um, so that's just my choice. It was it works with the uh, with the era that I'm that I'm doing and and the type of models that I'm building. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that when you dim. Even LEDs, they get warmer. So you want to be looking, you know, looking at your models as close to the light that you're going to be seeing them on your layout as possible as you're working on them. So that's kind of our lighting 101. So look at lumens and look at color temperature and try to keep it consistent inside your workspace. It's going to make a huge difference in your modeling. Tonight's tool of the week. Scratch brushes. <laughs> this will only cost you 15 bucks. I know there was concern last week of going broke, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I saw these here or saw them on another uh, uh, clinic or something, but these are just really cool. They're like little twist pens. And that kit that I showed, you get four different ones. You get a nylon bristle, fiber, brass, and steel. They're really great for distressing small pieces. 
What's nice about them is you can adjust the length of as you as you make the tip longer, uh, they get softer. So uh, and they're great for cleaning up stuff and and it's just they're just really cool. I I use them all the time, and you can just replace the tips. You can buy replacement tips on Amazon. So that's kind of cool. Uh, last week I did the neat website and I realized I think I shared I improperly shared my screen so when I shared rail photo art you didn't actually see the website so I'm hoping <laughs> that everybody could actually see the website tonight uh, is that up on online here yes yes it is yes, yes it is okay. yes yeah. yes so here I like I say I just wanted to show you this is if you go under the collections and uh in the collections, there'll be highlights. And then some of the images in here are just spectacular for research. Uh, right. And there's thousands of these images on this website. So that was last week's, but like I say, I just wanted to, I realized I only shared my keynote. I didn't share everything else. So <laughs> this week's neat website is shapeways.com. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. Yeah. Shapeways is a 3D modeling space on the web. But what's really cool is they have this marketplace. So if you go to shapeways.com, click on marketplace, and then up and search your marketplace, I'm just going to put in HL Railroad. And these are all 3D printed pieces. There's just a lot of detail stuff, um, all kinds of stuff, railroad bag. And they give you what the costs are for them. It's just a lot of, but when you get down here, this is page one of 256 pages. Jeez. There is just a ton of stuff. I bought some high bay light. Uh, 3D printed high bay lights. This is something these I just I'm going to actually order. These are uh, station benches, which are perfect for the era, you know, the 50s era that I'm looking for up on the subway. Yeah. Um, so it's just a really cool. And these are all just people that are out there. These really aren't companies. These are just modelers who are looking to make a couple bucks selling their stuff. So. Uh, so anyway, yeah, shapeways.com and go to the marketplace. So that's just kind of, I think that's really kind of cool. And uh, that's this week's. That's this week's uh, workshop tips and tech tricks. Any questions on any, any questions on anything? Boy, I'm telling you, you sure bring a lot to the table. There's no question about it. The information on gateways alone, my gosh, you could spend a, you could spend a, a few hours going through you that. Can, uh, can. can I ask a question for Bob? This is John Mick. Yes. Uh, Bob, I've been experimenting with NeoPixels. My goal would be to use them in the Arizona, Arizona State Capitol Museum where they're building a model railroad. I would need three feet by maybe 20 feet filled with NeoPixels. And I wondered if you had any experience with the Roscoe kind of diffusers, if you have any recommendations on that, have you used no. it before? What can you tell me about that kind Actually, of diffusing uh, on top of NeoPixels? Well, I'm not familiar with NeoPixels, so I'd have to look that up. But in terms of uh, Roscoe, um, that's a great company. And actually that's going to be one of our uh, websites that will be, but yeah, they have what you want to look at, uh, not just their sheet diffuser stuff, but the, go to their cinematic products. Roscoe makes a ton of cinema uh, stuff for cinema, for cinematography. Uh, and they have spun stuff. But uh, I'm not familiar with NeoPixels, so I'm going to look that Neo up. Pixels, NeoPixels are strips of uh, three-color LEDs spaced oh, okay. about one inch apart okay. on a half-inch wide strip. Sure, they typically okay. come with several hundred per strip. Yeah, we, we just call them roll lights. So, okay. You know something that makes a phenomenal – here's my little 
tips and tricks or or something for nothing here. Uh, a great diffuser is if you ever get microfoam packaging, not bubbled, not mini bubble wrap, but actually it's called microfoam. It's usually about an eighth of an inch thick and it's white and it's very soft, pliable foam. That makes phenomenal diffusers. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And so. usually you can find them in a box. <laughs> yeah. My goal is to have a blue sky. And uh -huh. in about two minutes' time, have it convert to a sunset, a sunset and go dark. Oh, but I need fantastic. to diffuse these things, and it needs to be really thin. So that sounds yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah, but they will That's have, like I say, if you go to Roscoe, look at their the cinema diffusion stuff. Uh, uh, but what you want to look at certainly is the light transmission on them, because some of them will cut transmission quite a bit. Okay. Is that a parameter of them? Yes, you'll be able to, if you look at the technical stuff, it will give you a light transmission factor. Okay, yeah. I'm going to drive all these with Arduinos, obviously, so cool. it's easy to control them. I've been experimenting yeah, with them. Looks, they work great, cool. but I just need to be able to something to diffuse them. Yeah, yeah. So it looks yeah. like sky. That's cool. Very yeah. cool. Bob, can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Char Charlie from Chicago. Not not to step on what you were just talking about, but I happen to have one of these Roscoe Lux things from yeah. about 30 years ago. Yeah. Just coincidence that you were talking about it. I use it all the time, or at least I, I make reference to it all the time. Sorry, I don't know if, if I can see that. But uh, anyway, um, my question was to you about lighting. Um, I, I, and I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm fairly knowledgeable about lighting, but I, I, when I get lights home, they're not what I want. And I'm talking big box light stores, uh, daylight, sunlight. I, I can read the numbers you're talking about, but you know, where do you go if you want to step up your game from Home Depot, Lowe's or something, where do you go to get professional lights or, or better than big box store lights? Well, I don't, I, there are, there are several. And I, what I can do is I will share in the chat I need to go look a couple up, but um, there are, there's LED, LED plus, I think there's a couple of big suppliers that we use and I will get those, those names out. Okay. And well, again, the big thing is consistency. Yeah. A lot of times, I mean, I just had an instance where I bought what was supposed to be a 3000 K fixture and when I plugged it in, it was purple, you know, <laughs> but we all know where these things are coming from. So, yeah, it's. Uh, so but one more one more question. There, are, there are sources out there and there are sources out there for luminaires, too, for the actual fixtures uh, that I will uh, again, I'll share it tonight. As soon as I get off here, I'll get on the uh, web and and put a couple of links up into the chat. One more question, Bob, a follow-up. Uh, with the technology that's coming along today, is there any drawback of going with, uh, to for a new layout, a new space, is there any drawback of, of focusing on LEDs as a prime, as all of your light source? Are you missing, are we missing anything? Uh, not, that by... I've, not that I've found. I'm using them everywhere now, uh, okay. in everything. Oh, again, workbench, paint booth, layout. Uh, the great thing about them, while they're not totally cool, you know, in terms of, of temp temperature, physical temperature, they do generate a little heat, but they generate such a lower level of heat than incandescent or halogen that it's, it's a big, big difference just in the workspace. But I, all I've seen is that the outputs are going up, the lumen outputs are going up. Uh, in LEDs, are we happen to have a company here in Syracuse called Ephesus, um, and they're doing. We have LED lights in our hockey arena, and they're doing arenas all across the country. And they're small fixtures; they're fixtures that are a foot by nine inches, and they're lighting hockey rings. Fantastic. So the efficiency is going to go up, but I don't see any downside. Um, as long as, you know, what I've done is I try to do everything that works either in a standard track fixture with an Edison threaded uh, base 
or you know a G G eight or G ten base, a bayonet base. Uh, I've stayed away from the MR sixteen <clears throat> low voltage, and I only work at line voltage now. I don't work with transformers. Thank you very much. So that's just my recommendations, but uh, yeah. I don't know if you can highlight me again, but I have one of these. I see somebody put up, maybe that was Phil who put up the scratch pens. Here's here's one of them right here. So anyway, yes. Uh, um, this is John Mick again. Can you put your email in the chat? Absolutely. Uh, Bob, I've got a, a, a small question about very small lights. I light the interior of my building with a uh, surface mount LED yep. and the best I can find, if I, I'm guessing uh, the light I'm getting out is probably 3,500 degrees, 4,000 is the, the yellowest I can get. Um, is it worthwhile trying to take those small LEDs and just give them a coat of yellow uh, translucent color to try yeah. to lower the temperature? like a gel, if you will. Exactly. And what you can use, what I've used in the past, is you can even just take a dab of like orange shell shellac. Um, you, that that works great because it's... Okay, okay, sure. You know? um, I just say, so or anything just or, a, orange or yellow sure. will, will lower the temperature. That's right. That's right. But, you okay. know, again, you want to look depend depending on period. So if you're lighting yeah. with gas light inside, you know, you want to get it down to that 2000, it's going to be more orangish. If you're lighting with early incandescent, it's going to be more in that auburn, you know, that amber yeah, range. Yeah, 30s and 40s, you want to be yeah. down maybe 2500 degrees. Probably 2500, right, exactly. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, thank you so much for tonight. I really do appreciate it. Oh, my it. pleasure. If so you have a lot of interest on the... Uh, subjects that you're dealing with so that's great that's always nice it's more interest than i got when i was teaching college i'll tell you that. <laughs> i'll be honest i wish i had you for a professor yeah. <laughs> i'll try to get your name right next week that's okay that's okay uh, that's okay paul 